Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got another shop talk video and it's gonna be regarding most shops nowadays not offering every service. Uh, there are still a lot of complete auto service places out there, but I know there's a lot of shops out there as well that are very selective. Some will basically only work on a particular car or do particular services or particular repairs on them. And that's what we're gonna be covering today in today's video. So before we go ahead and begin, guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. So just like the title says, guys, uh, why a lot of shops don't do certain jobs or they only want to focus on certain aspects of things is because most people are trying to become more specialized in what they're comfortable in. And being a complete auto repair place uh, to be honest with you, sometimes it can be more of a hassle than uh, it sounds because especially in today's world, it's not like we're in the 80s or 90s where most manufacturers, you know, pretty much only offered certain engines and certain transmissions and they didn't have any specialized tools that they needed to be worked on. But in today's era of automotive, I mean, almost every manufacturer has about 10 different specialty tools that you would need for a specific model. And they could be related to the specifics of engine uh, tools, uh, suspension tools, even certain scanners for certain electronics, certain modules uh, that you need to be able to program certain uh, computers and modules on a vehicle. I mean, it's just, it's nonstop. Uh, there could be demand. I mean, you could have one manufacturer with 10 different car models they make, and you would probably need about forty to $50,000 in specialty tools just to work on all the lineups of cars. So it's getting a little bit difficult to keep up with the pace. And that's what I find a lot of shops uh, are only specializing in certain cars. Like around where I am, uh, there's a shop that will only focus on BMWs. And one of them is a full Euro shop. One of them only wants to work on classic cars. And there's a few complete places that claim to be complete auto service. But if you call them and ask them for certain things, they won't do it. Now, I'm going to talk about me in general here. My shop is a pretty small size shop. Uh, you guys have seen the shop tour and there's not a whole lot of room in here. So I can't really do anything and everything uh, because some items are a struggle. So the reason why I don't do engine swaps or anything that involves me removing the engine on vehicles at my shop guys is because one, I'm very limited on space. My shop is only a two bay and there's not a whole lot of room. It's getting really tight. My toolbox is uh, right up uh, behind me and I'm actually uh, leaning on it right now. And my lift is about seven to eight feet away from where my toolbox is. So if you're trying to do an engine here the conventional way where you're using an engine hoist, you have no room to be able to go backwards. Sometimes an engine hoist is about seven feet long. So if I have a car on the lift and I'm trying to remove an engine, there's no room. Like I can't get past the, the brick wall to pull an engine out. You need at least about a good 10 to 15 feet to be able to swing it out and I don't have that so that's the one reason it's just my shop is small now the other reason is that sometimes to remove an engine nowadays you have to drop the whole subframe assembly with the suspension and everything and lift the, the car up away from it or drop it down and this requires you having the space like a flat stall to leave the car in the air for a couple days uh, while you do your work to your engine and swap it out, sometimes that can take a little bit of time. And it also requires specialized tools like having a table uh, that's made into a cart that can raise and lower this assembly up and down. And sometimes that cart is about four foot long by two feet wide, it takes up space and that's general space that I don't have in my shop. Uh, if I was doing, let's say, specialized engine work and I was removing engines every day nonstop, that would be a very viable piece of equipment that I would have to make room for and take the hit and go ahead and buy. But for me to spend four to five thousand dollars on these equipments that I'm only going to use, let's say, once or twice a year, make no sense. So therefore, uh, when it comes to certain things like that, I just I, I don't do engine swaps for the fact that you need all this equipment that requires room that I don't have. And on top of that, uh, sometimes it requires that the car be in your shop for a day or two while you're doing the swap. Uh, it's very rare that you can do an engine swap in a full day nowadays, uh, depending on the car. It's still possible, but typically it'll be broken up into two days or even a couple days, depending. And I don't have that type of valuable uh, space to have a car on a lift for two or three days because I need to make money to pay my overhead. So for me, realistically, if let's say uh, a Ford F-150 comes in here, 
and requires an engine replacement, let's say that job pays, let's say $4,000. And again, I'm just pulling numbers out of thin air here, but let's say it's $2,000 for an engine and around $2,000 for labor and miscellaneous parts. So let's say it comes up to four grand in total. And it takes me a total of three days. So let's say out of that $2,000 and it takes me two to three days to do this engine, I pretty much lost money on it because in the time that it takes me to do that engine, uh, I could have done four brake jobs to make the same amount of money as far as the labor goes. Uh, so for me, it's just not worth it because I'm giving up a lot of space and I'm working harder and it's more stressful to do an engine because there's more components to it than simply doing four or five brake jobs. And here's the kicker guys, I can do four to five brake jobs a day easily without an issue and make as much money or more money than doing an engine that will stress me out, has a lot more work to it, a lot more vital components and more possibility of it, you know, let's say something breaking on the car when I'm working on it uh, than a brake job would. So for me at the end of the day, um, making the same type of money as I would make doing a small job uh, that's quicker, cheaper, and easier for me to do versus a complicated job that you know could go you know either way, north or south, and you know wind up being a headache or going smoothly. Uh, so at the end of the day, just because of the limiting space that I have, that my shop isn't big, and all of the stress and headaches that come along with doing some of this major stuff, I just avoid doing engine swaps. If a customer comes into my shop and says, hey, I blew an engine, I need to replace my engine, I'll tell them I apologize, I, I don't do these. However, I do have a shop in the area that I've worked with before that I refer them out to uh, because I'm not able to do it. And it's uh, you know pretty simple when it comes to that, guys. Uh, you got to focus on what makes money. Even though uh, doing an engine makes money, sometimes do you want to work twice as hard for the same amount of pay or would you rather just do you know the stuff that isn't that stressful and makes the same amount of money? Uh, if I had a huge shop and I had the extra stall space and everything, I mean, why not? You'd be stupid to re refuse doing work, you know, like an engine swap. But unfortunately, just because of the two bays and the limited space, um, I just simply have to pass on them. Even if uh, it's one of those weeks where there's not a whole lot coming in, um, you know, you never know how this industry will be. You'll have some weeks where you're super busy and some weeks where you're doing nothing. But even on those weeks when I'm doing nothing, it's very hard for me to take in an engine swap simply because of the spacing issue. And what if something goes south and that truck gets stuck here for about a week because I'm, you know, weighing on parts or something? That can hurt me more in the long run because the next week I may have a bunch of cars lined up and I need that stall and I need that lift. So it's just a chance that uh, you know it could happen and I, I don't want to risk it. So I'd rather just avoid it altogether. Uh, so that's one thing that I avoid at my shop. Some of the other things that I uh, avoid at my shop, guys, are things that are highly uh, specialized, I guess you can say. And uh, not that it's highly specialized in any way, shape, or form, it's just that it would require a lot of time and some specialty tools that you know I don't see a return on investment on. And to give you an example of this, I recently made a short uh, video. It was a Ford Flex with, a, I believe, a 3.5 liter. It was leaking from the water pump. And that job requires you to basically either, you can do it on the car, but it's a hassle. It's easier to just drop the engine out and do it uh, on a stand. Uh, or you know, drop a subframe assembly and just have all the room in the world. But either way, uh, when it comes to that job, uh, it came in here, I diagnosed it, um, I made that quick shorts video, and then I had to refuse uh, doing the job on it. Not because uh, I wasn't able to do it, but simply the economics of it weren't gonna work out because uh, I had to order all the parts and Ford didn't have everything in stock and if I'm doing uh, water pump and timing chains on that engine, I'm going to try to go all original parts. I don't want to risk it with any aftermarket part. So it consisted of me having to wait for certain parts. And in my mind is I don't know what I'm exactly going to need. What if I open it up and there's let's say a uh, specialty pin that I need and that takes a month to get because it's on back order, which seems to be uh, the common thing nowadays amongst dealers. The smallest, easiest little things are on back order and they don't know when they're coming back in. So in my mind, uh, I simply refuse that job because it would tie up my lift and I don't have the space for it. Um, and on top of that, I don't know what I was gonna need when I got in there because if anything was on back order for more than a day or two, I would be in trouble with it. 
And uh, thirdly would be the investment of the specialty tools that I would need if there were any. Now, they do make uh, timing kits for those where they have these special tools to lock the cam gears and things like that. You can still do it without it, but I would feel more comfortable doing it with having the tools just because it's not something that I do all day, every day. Uh, I'm not working on four timing chains and water pumps all day long. I get a variety. So I would want that specialty tool set, and that set would be around $350 to $500, and it would take a couple days to get. And on top of that, uh, when would be the next time that I would ever use it? You know, it's you're spending all that money uh, to do this one job, and you know the amount of money that I would have to put forward with parts and specialty tools to buy them uh, to use for this one job. Now, a tool always will make you money. They're not ever a loss, but the way I think about it, if I spent 500 bucks on a timing kit uh, from Ford for these particular engines, I would have to do a few of those jobs to be able to pay off the tools and make it worth it. And I don't see these engines coming in for the same issue to my shop all the time. It's not one of those repairs that I get, you know, five of them a month that I can, you know, say, hey, it's worth it to buy the tools and have everything here so I can do these. Uh, because at that point, you know, I wouldn't mind doing it because I would have quick turnaround. I would already know what I need to get for all of them every single time because they usually will have the same pattern of failure. And I'll just go in and, you know, order everything, have it, uh, get in the shop and get it done within a day or two and quick turnaround. Uh, because that's the whole point of my shop. I'm a small shop. You got to have really quick turnaround time because you can't block your bays. Your bays are your money makers. And I can't have a car sitting in here for days on end uh, blocking my stall, not making money. So in that scenario, things like that, I have a tendency to not take in. Not because I can't do them, just simply I, I don't want to run into a situation where I tie myself up and then I'm not making any money. And I wind up, you know, getting it over my head and, you know, I'm stressing out. And then it makes it more difficult to cover the overhead of the shop. Um, so things like that are things that I don't cover and do. Um, my shop, personally, guys, I don't do engines. I don't do transmissions. If you bring in a trans, let's say you have a rear main seal leak, I just got to pull it off and do it. That's not a problem, typically, because those are usually, you know, I can turn those around pretty fast within a day. But again, removing any major components, uh, like an engine, trans, sub uh, frame, dropping everything like that, at least for me and my shop, uh, because of spacing and limiting factors, I don't do it. And it's not an issue of me being able to do it, it's just an issue of having the space to do it and certain equipment that I can't fit in my shop and I don't have uh, because you know there is a, a cost of things that I can't quite you know afford yet. Even though I've been doing this for years, most of you shop owners out there or most mechanics that work in the shop know that not every shop has everything. Sometimes they buy something when they really need it. And that's kind of been the case for me. I buy things as I need them if I see it's going to be a good investment in value for the shop. But I never want to spend $1,000 to buy one thing to use it once and never uh, use it again because you just don't make any money on that. You want losing money. Uh, you know, so it is what it is at the end of the day. So this is what I wanted to uh, kind of reference. Uh, I notice this a lot. And the, the main reason why I'm making this video is uh, I had a customer come in today and they wanted me to replace their engine. And when I told them that I don't do that here, they pretty much told me that I was a bad mechanic and that the reason why I won't do it for them is because I don't know how to do it. And then, as a matter of fact, it was just annoying. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, bye. You know, like, you know, there's a door. Don't let it hit you on the way out. Because personally, I know what I'm capable of doing. Like, it wasn't the case. And the customer was just trying to get a rise out of me, which is the most annoying thing ever. Because, you know, I, you can't get a rise out of me. I don't care. You can say anything to me. I'm like, all right, there's a door, bye. Don't let it hit you on the way out. Like, it is what it is. You know, it's something that I don't do here. I don't do it. Uh, to take a personal aim at me is just not cool. But, you know, it happens. People are going to be people. So uh, I just wanted to uh, you know, share this with you guys. There's a lot of shops out there that will claim complete, but they're not. It's hard to be a complete shop nowadays. There are a few shops out there that are able to do a lot of stuff, but I mean, the overhead and the amount of money they're spending on tooling and equipment, I mean, there's just, I'm not at that level yet, uh, so I'm not exactly sure how they're able to do it. Um, you gotta have you know at least a lot of years in this business with a very good solid customer base to be able to uh, do anything and everything and be able to go out and buy equipment that you may not make your money back on right away that might take you years uh, to make your money on and uh, simply for me in my shop that's not something that I can do I, I can't go out and buy a five thousand dollar piece of equipment to have it pay me back you know over ten years time. Uh, that to me is a little bit stretch. If I spent five grand, I would reasonably have to have that equipment make that money back within a year to three years, possibly. Uh, that would be the time frame for me. That's how it works out for my shop. 
So I uh, just wanted to share this topic, uh, kind of, you know, share this information uh, that some shops right now are specializing in certain things and only doing certain items. Uh, it's not uh, as easy as it used to be where they do anything and everything because cars were simply easier to work on. Now they require specialty tools, uh, scanners, and a whole bunch of stuff, guys, that most small independent shops like mine are not keeping up to date with a lot of stuff because it's so much to take in at one time. So a lot of them are picking and choosing what they're working on. So with that said, guys, hopefully you guys uh, like this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel grow. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.